there. Okay, awesome. I think it's going. There's the red light. All right. Okay. Lord, I thank you so much for tonight. I thank you for um, helping us to remember this call the last minute today, um, but just giving us an opportunity to get together, to be face to face, and just to continue to grow together, Lord. So I just pray that you would bless this time tonight and that you would help us to leave um, with more insight into what we need to be doing each day to continue to grow with this. Lift it up in your name. Amen. All right. So quick announcements. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it popped up in the back office. We got emails. Those of us going to summit, which should be everybody. <laughs> um, the selection guide is now available. And I think the, the sign up date is that first week of May. And um, these fill up really fast. I learned last year. Um, they get, are going to give you on that selection guide you know, the different places that you can pick, which course you want to go down, and it'll give you a certain set of speakers that you will see each day. Um, and there is no way with 20,000 people to get to every speaker, so you kind of have to look over that selection guide before that deadline comes to sign up. Um, if it's your first time, make sure you take time to look over that and figure out what is going to be the most beneficial to you um, growing your business. I know a lot of times we pick things like based off of, well, I want to be with my people, right? And I think that's good to an extent, but at the same time, like, I think it would be really awesome if we, as a crew, even decided to split up a little bit and then could bring more insight back as a whole team afterwards. So um, just look over that, see what is going to be most beneficial to you, and then we'll kind of be talking in the next my hope is in the next few weeks of which directions we're going to be going. And if you are somebody on this call that's going to be going to Summit, like you're already signed up, would you um, maybe just in the chat right now even let us know if that's you? Um, and I will try to get a message thread going just for our little group so we can be talking through like the details of that, like what – places we're staying, what courses we're interested in doing, and kind of maybe divide that out so we can be strategic in what we bring back from that. So let me know. Um, next thing, take advantage of the Spring Into Health promo. I think everybody knows about this, but if you don't, we are doing all access pass challenge pack right now for $160, which is like insane. And makes no sense to me, like, why it's that um, cheap, because it's not something that's cheap. Like, it's an incredible value. So, and that's only this month. I think it'll go back to the normal price next month. Um, so, definitely take advantage of that this month. It's a huge, huge, huge deal. And just, I saw the question pop up in my team page just this past week. Is it three SC points still? No, it's only two. So make sure um, you're aware of that as you're working towards success club goals too. And then the success club prize in April is a Beachbody branded backpack. And I have no idea. I haven't even looked at the picture. I don't know what that looks like, but sounds cool. We saw a really cute one at Super Saturday and we were all going, I want one of those. Maybe it's one of those. I don't know. <laughs> it's a cool backpack. So if you hit success club five, you're going to get one of those. And shout outs real quick here. These are the people that are on the Success Club leaderboard so far this month. Alicia Cooper is at eight. Melissa Hayes is at eight. Emily is at six. Karen is at four. Lois is at four. Jody is at four. Jessica has two. Victoria has two. Latana has two. One of my personally sponsored, Joy, this is her first challenge pack ever, and she just got it. This is her first month of coaching. She sold her first one. Yay. And I am sitting at two right now. So good job, everybody, and keep pushing forward. It's the 11th, and I think one of the big takeaways I heard in um, the training group that I'm a part of right now, one of the things that was recently said was you should be pushing just as hard in the beginning of the month as most coaches do the last week of the month. And when you do that, 
then you don't come off as tacky and salesy because we get super desperate at the end of the month. And a lot of times we throw prices around, we push people, we just because we're, we're panicking, trying to hit that goal, right? So make sure that you have that mindset of being strategic and pushing the beginning of the month, not just that last week of the month. And that is all I have for announcements, guys. So um, we are gonna open it up just to talk through Super Saturday um, announcements that we had and takeaways that you might have had, um, and then question and answer time. So who wants to do the honors of going over those new programs? Do you wanna do it, Emily? I think Emily really wants to talk about the uh, YouTube version two, <laughs> two, whatever that is. The UV really two. Excited. Emily is really excited to do that one. You should have seen my face when that came up. I was like, "You're like, oh, I'm gonna give <laughs> that was, one a shot," but I don't know if I'm gonna like like that one very I, much. But I know that it's gonna be good for a lot of people. I love the concept of it, and I thought the moves were really good. But, but the video that they showed, the quality to me was like 1980s, like John Fonda. Yeah, so that kind of threw me off a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I tried Brazil butt lift too with that guy oh, okay. with the Leandro. Yeah. And I think they spent I, five minutes, five dollars on those graphics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Oh, I just thought Leandro was kind of annoying during that, but maybe if I know what I'm getting into with this one, <laughs> it won't be so bad, but. Okay, so obviously there's a new one coming out called UV2. It's like U, Y-O-U version two is kind of what I take it as. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a Zumba style workout is what I would like summarize it as. Um, it also, I don't have very much written down about it, but. Um, also comes with like a kid's version. Did you guys catch that? Yeah. Yeah. So I, think, I, think I saw that it was supposed to be like for beginners, like specifically for new people yeah. that haven't exercised mm -hmm. before. And that would be a great one to have like your young family join you yep. in. I, absolutely. It's very low impact, which is nice. Um, and just like a for fun Richard Simmons style workout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So. Um, music from like the 70s and maybe yeah. 80s. I know like Love Shack stood out to me. Isn't that like 70s? Yeah. So, yeah. Felt the same way. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a certain demographic that I think this is aiming for. Yeah. Right. And I, I felt like they tried to portray that with the actual participants in the video is who they're trying to market this to. Yeah, and yes, Emily, you're totally right. People with injuries like your hip surgery. Yeah. will be awesome for that. So um, so that's one of them. The other one is called Shift Shop, <laughs> which is tricky to say, but um, it's the, with the new Super Trainer from that series that Beachbody did, like the, uh, I don't know what else to like relate it to, but they, um, Chris Downing is his name. He's a big buff black guy easy on the eyes <laughs> um but it's out oh, and uh sorry the uv2 is coming out in may may 16th 2017 um shift shop will be launching at summit which is in july so um uv2 will be out first and then shift shop and it's like a Cardio strength and agility program is what I have written down. Um, the workouts start 35 minutes the first week, and then the next week it goes up to, I'm sorry, 25 the first week, 35 the second week, and 45 the third week. And you do like one minute repetition for the first week. So that leads up to the, thir the 25 minutes. And then for the second week, you do one minute set and then another 45 minute second set. And then on the third week, you do a one-minute set, a 45-second set, and then a 30-second set. So that's why it kind of keeps building every week. And that's why the, t the whole time keeps going up, too. So you're kind of, I think, it, I, I understood it as you're doing kind of the same exercises, just um, increasing the amount of time you do each one for. Mm -hmm. so, um, it comes with the markers, so it's just like these round colored 
round things, <laughs> pieces of paper. <laughs> I'm sure they're like plastic or something, but there's like, that's part of the agility uh, to like, you know, shuffle, shuffle or run to each marker or whatever. There were different, um, different, I guess, examples that they showed in the video. Um, and there's a food plan that comes with it. Didn't look like it incorporated the containers. Did anybody else? No. No. Um, starts out with, you know, you're eating fairly normal. What do you say, Karen? Sorry. I thought that was kind of weird or very yeah. unusual that it wouldn't do the containers. I thought I mean, so too. What the plan is doing and I like it, but I thought that was very interesting. I thought so too. It seems like that's what the rest of our programs have been doing. So it's mm -hmm. weird that it's like, no, we're not doing that with this one. So um, the meal plan looked like basically you start out with carbs and then veggies and proteins. And um, as you go each week, you increase your veggies and proteins, decrease your carbs. So pretty, I mean, standard, typical type meal plan, I think. So um so yeah that's all i have written down about those anybody else have anything to add i think that one that second one the shift shop is going to be very high impact so it'll be people that have um already really been working out quite a bit i would think it's going to be pretty intense i think i thought that was a kinsey evans program yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that sounds like a Shanti type of insanity. Yep, <laughs> asylum. Yep, she's saying yeah. absolutely. Yeah, she's going to like I it. I thought it was a lot, remind me a lot like P90X2. Okay, I haven't done that one. I haven't either. I haven't done it either, but I do P90X3. And I see that, I've seen that a lot. And it reminds me a lot of that. Like you might do ship shop first and then x2 or x2 first and then ship shop i'm not sure okay that's good to know mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah i thought it looked awesome i agree with you i was like oh it doesn't use the portion control system mm -hmm. but i don't know maybe it's giving a different spin on things I, I don't know it was it when we looked at that plan did it seem more intense than the portion control like a little bit more restrictive or have you guys looked at it I enough? think it leaned it go I didn't look at it very closely but I think it ends up that way I think it like phases mm -hmm. towards pretty strict at the end like in that last week so Seems it's like. not as much a like lifestyle. It's like this is a program results kind of nutrition plan. I think so. Yeah. I don't know. We'll have to look at it more when the materials come out. <clears throat> so. It's you. Yeah. Okay. So then, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead. I was just going to mention the vegan Shakeology, two flavors, vanilla and caffeine latte. They're out already. I've already switched my home direct order to get the <laughs> vanilla. <laughs> I, I, oh, wait, no, I got cafe latte. I switched Brett's to get vanilla, so mm. pumped about that. I need to do that. I was looking at somebody's Facebook, and they had already had the vegan vanilla, and they made this amazing-looking dessert with it. Like oh, that was Leslie. Vanilla, like a whipped vanilla. New yeah, I think it was Leslie. Yeah, hers but looked like ice cream last night. It looked so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it looked so good. I don't think that I, like, I don't love the regular chocolate Shakeology, but I love the vegan chocolate. And I don't love the regular vanilla Shakeology, but I think I'm really going to like that vanilla, or the vegan vanilla. Yeah. I think that'll be super delicious. I'm the same. I don't really like the regular vanilla. Mm -mm. Maybe I just haven't found a way to make it yet. <laughs> well, I feel like no matter how I make it, there's a super, there's like a tartness to it. No matter what I've tried to put in it, there's always this weird aftertaste. Yeah. And I can't, I can't do it. It's because it almost stings my mouth as weird as that sounds, but it's just really tart at the end and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> You, did I, did, does that make sense? Like you? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has a very distinct flavor. 
Mm-hmm. It does. Yes. Yeah, I'm so anxious to try the vegan one. <laughs> Melissa, vanilla is her absolute favorite. She thinks we're all crazy. It's her jam. <laughs> I wish I could like it. It's my jam. It's because I can't taste it. There's not, like, I put so much fruit in there, I can't taste anything. It wouldn't matter. I put all my fruit <laughs> containers in it. So, like, it just happens to be in there, but all I taste is strawberries and pineapple. <laughs> yeah. Because like, that's what I tell everybody uh, when people are asking about it. I say it's the most versatile because you can make it whatever you want it to be. If you want, fruity you can have fruity or if you want it to be peanut butter it can be peanut butter or if you want it to be chocolate it can be chocolate (laughs) and you can make it whatever you want so I I think a lot of people buy it just for that so that's what I do I switch I switch around flavors and then when I have like extra strawberries or spinach and stuff that's going bad I'll freeze it and I'm like okay I'm freezing it and then I make it with vanilla yeah and it works out that's a good idea Mm -hmm. I heard the vanilla, the vegan vanilla has more of a vanilla flavor. Good. I hope so. I'm really excited to try it. Me too. Me too. So then um, beyond that, those were the big announcements. Um, In Kansas City, we had the opportunity to hang with Carl Deichler for a little bit, Mm -hmm. which was awesome. And he gave one of his typical, you're hanging on his every word, inspirational speeches. Um, And I just loved it. I loved every bit of what he said. I went live in my team because I was like, I can't decide which part of this I want to share. So I'm just going to give it to you guys. (laughs) Um, But then there was also a panel, you know, uh, with the elite coaches. And I know that several of us had some really good takeaways from that. So Montana, do you want to talk about the one that you really talked that really was yeah, big for you? Yes. So I feel like lately in my challenge groups, um, me and Emily had this conversation a couple weeks ago, but I just feel like my challenge groups are getting, I, I personally use just the app right now, but I feel like my challenge groups are getting kind of boring. It's, it just seems kind of um, the same material the whole time and I just need to spice things up. And so the, I used to, when I used to do my um, challenge groups on Facebook, I would go live or do videos more because I absolutely love doing that type of stuff. But since I really like the app because you can log all your stuff. So one of the elite panel members, Lindsay, Hay, Lindsay Hayes, she had suggested that she, well, what she does is she starts a Facebook group for her challenge groups and a group in the app. And what she does is the work, the week prior to her challenge group starting, she gets into her Facebook, goes live, and she does some fun things like one week cleaning out your pantry. So they get, so her and all of her challenge, challengers clean out their pantry and post pictures and videos of them doing it and fun things like that. And so I think what my goal is for my next challenge group that starts May 1st is to do something like that. And then keep open the Facebook group and go live in it more, maybe once or twice a week. And um, then also use the app because I do have a lot of challengers that really like to log their Shakeology and workouts because it helps to keep them accountable. I really do wish though that they would just open up a video feature in the app because I feel like that would be so helpful for everybody. So that's one thing I took away from Lindsay is I thought that was a really good idea to kind of do some fun things week before your challenge group, like cleaning out your pantry and sharing pictures and videos of that. So that's, that was my biggest takeaway and the thing I'm looking forward to the most for my next challenge group. Yeah, Emily just asked, can you go live in the app? And that's a no makes me really sad, but Mm -hmm. but like Melissa said, you can record on YouTube or record and then upload to YouTube and put it in. Um, And I've done that for a few of the videos I wanted to share. It's just, it takes a little bit more time. So it'd be really nice if they add some kind of live feature at some point, but. Well, that's what I I was wondering. I, I know you can't go live in there right now, but I'm wondering if it has the capability to have a live feature in there if they'll end up doing that or not. Mm-hmm. I, I just so. think, I think with the app, I absolutely love that app. I love everything about it, but I feel like you, like for me personally, I feel like I've become very distant with my challengers because I'm not 
live with them or I'm not putting recordings on there or anything like that. It's literally just all typed words. And that I think, I think kind of puts a wedge between us and it's not as a solid connection or as intimate as it could be with your relationship with your challenger versus where in Facebook live or just a video. Um, I think that that just speaks to them a little bit better. Yeah. And that was one of the things Lindsay said. She said that she spends that week going live as much as she can mm -hmm. just so that people get to know her and be a little comfortable with her and get to see her real personality versus just through text. Cause we know a lot of times things get lost mm -hmm. in that translation. So her saying that like I, I do a prep group typically I've done that since the app came out because I wanted to upload my files and stuff for the people that were a part of my groups ahead of time, like the meal plans, the grocery list, all that kind of stuff. I like getting that to them ahead of time. And so I made the prep group mainly about that. Like I would post, you know, a welcome and then I'd post a um, challenge group meal guide and this is how we grocery shop. And, and each day leading up, I had things like that. But I didn't go live very much. And um, just last month, I started doing my welcome live because as most of you know, I've shared this, I'm terrified of the live feature. <laughs> it totally makes me scared. But it's, um, I'm, I'm getting more comfortable with it. I've done it now for the last three groups. And this group, after hearing Lindsay say that, I just had a prep group. Oh, my alarm's going off. <laughs> um, this past week was my prep group, and then we started yesterday. And after that, on after hearing her say that on Saturday, I went live two times on Saturday, and then two times again on Sunday. Just like silly things, you know, like talking to them about how they can contact me during the challenge. Like, what's the best way to get a hold of me? And I did it with my daughter right there. And then I I took them like tonight. I went grocery shopping and. I went live while I was grocery shopping and like showed them what I look for in the ingredients labels and just stuff like that. So they can not only gain, you know, information from it, but I loved what she said about like get them getting to see your true personality through that. So, and it's helping me to get more comfortable with that feature so that I can be braver to do it on my actual profile. Cause I'm working out the courage to do that more. <laughs> That's that. I don't know what it is, but I completely agree with you. The going live thing really freaks me out. I am a very outspoken, outgoing person and I will talk to anybody, but I don't know why that scares me so much, but I 110% agree with you. And last night I did, I was super comfortable on Snapchat, but one of my best friends, she started this thing called a gratitude challenge where you wake up in the morning and you write down the first three things that you're thankful for. And then before you go to bed, you write down three good things that happened to you that day. So in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go on Facebook Live with this. This is, this is good. I, I just, I lost my courage. I couldn't do it. I did it on Snapchat, fine. But I think it's good on Snapchat. I can delete it if I sound stupid. <laughs> well, you, you can delete really your live, live too. too. I wanted to do that the other day. <laughs> but everybody yeah. talked me down from it. <laughs> I... I was scared of live until literally this week. I don't know what happened, but I feel like I actually have something to like talk about for once. I don't know. Before I didn't ever know what topics to talk about. Mm -hmm. but. And like you said, it doesn't tell you how much time you're talking. So you know how I get it. I mean, I get to talking and then like 15 minutes later, I'm still talking. <laughs> so people will probably be like, get off your face. Everybody's live. commenting like, you're just rambling. Shut get up. <laughs> get off. My my stepdad works for the Kansas Small Business Development Center, so he helps entrepreneurs um, do, I don't know, get better or whatever. He doesn't specialize on online marketing, but he did tell me the other day, he said, just watching your page, when you go live, you get more traction for several days. Um, he goes, and the most ones have been when I've been silly or whatever he's like just get on there let them see who you are because he's like remember you're selling who you are so if you never are on there they don't know so he's like even if you feel stupid you don't you're not or even if you don't feel confident in sharing something that's important here's something that's funny and silly 
just to do it. What, have your kids ride around and go live. Hey, we're outside playing on the bike or whatever. He's like, that will get more attention and draw people to who you are. So even when we're afraid, just do it anyway, just because it's going to draw people to, to the essence of who you are. So That's not great. that it makes it easier to do it, but <laughs> I keep meaning to go live when Bryce is still awake because I feel like that'll, a lot of people will like that better, but I can't, I just can't get, I can't him sit him, get him to sit still for two seconds, let alone record a whole thing with him, but it's just easier once he's in bed. So maybe one of these days. I was at the vet Sunday and me and Steven had to take Nolly and Jax to get their yearly shots complete chaos. I'm talking like Nolly's over here whining and screaming. Jack's over here barking and biting, trying to bite the, <laughs> the person trying to give him a shot. And I was so close. I was like, this would be hilarious to Facebook live this. But like, I could, I couldn't even get my phone out because it was complete chaos. Like I had to hold him and, but just, I think that's, I think that's so real. Like, you know, Melissa made the point just to say like, just getting on there, no matter what it is for a little while and just kind of going for it. And then when, when you start kind of filming other things live, like maybe eventually we can like do a quick selfie of us and then shut it off and then just kind of get a little bit more comfortable with it, you know, so. Yeah, I definitely think though going live in groups would help everybody yes. get comfortable with just being in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. Also, I don't know if you guys follow Shalene Johnson's son on Snapchat, do you? Mm -mm. No. Um, he's like a big Snapchat guru. Um, and he's been like speaking on a bunch of team calls for Beachbody and stuff, but he's in college. So he's like this young kid. But um, anyways, he was talking about today, uh, earlier today, he was talking about speaking in front of people or like speaking in a group or something like that. And he was like, it's, we're past the point where we need to write out what we need to say. He was like, that is so much more stressful now for, you know, just like how this society interacts with each other. And he was like, first, you got to take the time to sit down and plan out what you're going to say. Second, you got to like memorize it. And that just stresses you out even more. So he was like, just be who you are. Just talk and, you know. He's like, I have some thoughts and, and ideas of what you're going to talk about so you don't just ramble, but mm -hmm. um, it was kind of like a, yeah, I don't, like, I don't need to plan out everything, you know? So I thought That's that was a, good point. a little information. I think I might try to go live in my event page for my next challenge group, just because I think it's a good time to explain exactly what a challenge group is and how it works and that type of thing. And just besides me posting before and afters and or meal plan stuff. And I love posting that type of stuff, but I think it is important that you get out, get yourself out there. And most people on my Facebook know me, but just to get out there and let people know who I am. And if they don't know me and um, just put myself out there like that, I, I think I'm going to try to do that this week. I did that. I think that was one of the first live things that I did was just in my mm -hmm. event. And I had like, the containers and like a bag of Shakeology and was mm -hmm. like, this is what comes, a idea. In, comes in a shake or what a challenge bag. Yeah. I think, um, I watched Raina do that once and she like actually opened up the nutrition guide too, to show them like how explicit and detailed that is. And also at the same time, like how versatile it is. You don't have to eat this today and this tomorrow. Like, and I thought that was really awesome. And then I was like, I'm going to do that. And I've never done it. So <laughs> do it. Yeah, I you opened the challenge, challenge pack and I did the book and I opened it up and showed pictures. So I went live the other day to open a challenge pack. Didn't That's get much idea. traction. But I did that. <laughs> do you do it on your public profile or like in an event? No, my public page. I've never. That, Melissa. That's awesome. Yeah. And that was when, I don't know if you guys got to listen in on Shalene's um, national wake-up call that she did. She was huge on making sure, and it, and it was like she, I think that call happened a week too late for a lot of us, um, because she really called us out on the spring all-access all deal, um, and a ton of coaches even on our team were going live and talking about the actual price and like how wonderful that is 
because we were excited about it. And I'm thankful. Like I had been planning to do it and my fear got in the way and I didn't do it. So now I'm like, Oh, that was good. That was good. I did it. <laughs> you did. <laughs> yes, you did. Okay. Yeah. So she like, she came on and I know a ton of coaches on our team had done it and she said, don't do exactly what I've seen so many people doing and, and talked all about how we have to share story. Like we have to connect things to life and how it would apply to them too. Like, so whatever the niche is that you are trying to connect with on your page, you have to share stories that draw them in first. And then you can at some point, not on every video, like some videos just need to be talking about your life. Uh, but on some of them to have that kind of call to action at the end that talks about how this helps you through that and being genuine in that and um, taking that sales factor out of it. She said, you don't ever want to, and we all know this, like you don't ever want to share the price ahead of time, but it was like in this moment, it was okay to so many of us. And even though I didn't go live, all of my private messages, like a hundred messages of invites that I'd done that week were starting out with, this is the new price. Like I, I that was kind of how I, I, I worded it a little differently, but I actually put the price in that first message. And after she said that, I went, dang it, I should have been doing that. <laughs> so I just, it's a good reminder to us to make sure that every single thing that we're doing is a storyline just being genuinely who we are and sharing how this makes our life a little bit better. And for those of us owls, it's really hard to tell stories. <laughs> I'm a horrible storyteller. So I just talk and tell the facts. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with facts. <laughs> I sent in a message because I told Emily today, I was, oh gosh, I woke up and I just was cracking up because, so I have this LuLaRoe dress that, so my best friend sells LuLaRoe, so I buy like all these really cute dresses, of course, but there's this one dress in particular that I just can, I could not wear because I felt so uncomfortable in it because like I just hated the way my stomach looked in it, it was a stupid thing, so... I put it on today and I texted Emily and I was like, watch out. I was like, I'm wearing my new LuLaRoe dress. And I said, Beyonce's here or something like that. And she was cracking up and I was like, you know what? I said, I'm super, I said, so far I've been the coach where I just put my stuff out there and I let people contact me. And I said, I'm done with that. I said, it's, it's my turn to start contacting people. And so Christy, how you're talking about earlier, you know, your certain news feed and the people that you are targeting. So for me personally, I feel like, you know, losing my parents I have a target like that where I have friends that have lost their parents as well and so I started going through and was like talking to and we're all friends and so I've been telling them you know like this is what I'm doing with Beach Funny I'm like you guys like this has changed my life I said I don't have to take antidepressants anymore like I don't have to go to therapy anymore I'm like this is this is where it's at. And so I'm telling them like how my journey has expanded into me being happy again and like actually waking up excited in life and stuff like that. And like, I think I'm really like helping them out. And that is, that is just one of the best feelings that I could ever give to somebody is that feeling of just happiness again, especially happiness when you didn't, when you didn't ever think that you would ever feel it again. But that's kind of like my target audience that I'm going for right now. And like, I'm really excited about it. I think it's gonna, I think I'm going to change a lot of lives in that aspect. Love it. That's awesome, Montana. Very, very Thank cool. Bella got a groove back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's up? And I think that for many of us, it takes being on this journey for a while to figure mm -hmm. out what those connecting to other people pieces are. It doesn't, yeah. you don't just... Or I should say most people don't just start out going, this is the specific target I have. Mm -hmm. This is the specific story I have to tell. It's, that's been a beautiful part of this journey for me is just figuring out more and more of who I am and what truly makes me a significant piece in this world. You know, like we mm -hmm. all have our special things and it's part of so the journey to like nail down what that is and how we can contribute. 
And I think it will always, not always change, but I think it will evolve as we go mm -hmm. even still. Mm -hmm. Different that experiences in our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Did anybody, um, I really only have one thing written down from what Carl said. I think I was just listening the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I do have some things written down from Doug Moss. Mm -hmm. um, that I could share. He is, um, for those of you that weren't there or don't know him, he's the Senior Director of Sales for what, the Central and Midwest, Midwestern and Western? Mm -hmm. Central and, and Western, something like that. <laughs> from like, Michigan over, right? Yeah. To the West. Um, and what he does is just meets with top coaches or I think, yeah, mostly top coaches uh, to help them in their business part of it. So what he said was he had six things that he said the top coaches are or, or who they are or what they do. And so here they are. The top coaches have a genuine interest in helping people. They have confidence and belief in what they're doing. They're flawed. They're not perfect. <laughs> they're patient. They're willing to put in the time to help people. And they're committed. And the last one was they're having fun. So those are good, just little tributes to what they're doing and, you know, good uh, things to remember that even though it looks like they're lives are perfect on Facebook and it maybe not it probably doesn't but um they're also just people just like us mm -hmm. and so. I really liked I really liked him mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to add to what Emily was saying he said that he has a YouTube channel or mm -hmm. he has YouTube videos out there so if you just um type in Doug Moss elite coach trainer it was or best of the best in the west i've watched best like every best. single one of those <laughs> really you, yeah so he so it's actually videos with him on the phone with um top coaches right is what those videos are mm -hmm. okay, yeah perfect. and he just I gets on and it's like q a know. with them cool yeah he seems really really nice oh emily i'm reading your message right now she said, these Plexus and Thrive people are driving me crazy. I have so many contacting me and basically trying to tell me the Beachbody income plan isn't as good as theirs. I've expressed that I love Beachbody and found my niche, but I'm not interested and they just keep sending me messages. Wow. They're crazy. Yes. That's crazy. And do you know that right there was one of the, oh, I'm sorry, Emily. I had the message screen pulled up and I didn't see you talking. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just saying that's what I've been doing is sending messages back. They just, I'm just like, oh my gosh, please stop. Like this one girl, I'm just going to share. I know this is totally not part of the call, but I want to share with you what she, what she just said. What's the lesson how not to do it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she said, I have a question for you. If you bought $600 worth of products for yourself, from Beachbody, how much commission would you make? Because For yourself? I, yes, what? because I guess if you buy Plexus products as a ambassador, you make money off of your own orders. I feel like that's not legal. Yeah. No, I don't know, but she has been like on me like for two weeks and I keep telling her, I'm not, I've told her, I don't know how many times, <laughs> like, I'm not interested. <laughs> That's when you send the rolly the rolly eye emoji back. I know, but <laughs> I'm not interested. I'm like, oh, I just don't know how to just get her to just stop it already. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. I had a girl, a friend of mine who was, keeps talking about Beachbody, but she never commits to anything anyway ever for anything in her life. And so she's like tags me in this other thing where you can take these two pills a day and you'll magically lose this weight. And so, like, she tagged me on the page, and I was like, I'm sorry, magic pills don't exist. If you want real health, you'll need to work at it. And I mean, it for I loved your post, if Emily. magic pills existed, none of us would be doing what we do. I mean, like, come on, people. If magic pills existed, there would not be a what? What did um, Carl say, like, $18 billion workout industry right now or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I'm yeah. telling you that. That would not exist if that was the case. People, it's just, people are just so lazy that they're like, ooh, let's just take this pill. Like, we'll lose weight for a week. And then when we start eating again, we're going to get it back. It's real. Been there, done that. It's not me real. Too. It will never work. It will yeah. never work. And then I had another friend tell me today uh, that has, that does thrive. Oh, I've lost 13 pounds since I, like in a month or something since doing thrive. Mind you, I just saw a post that they had ran five miles and I'm like, oh yeah, you're just losing all this weight. Oh, anyway, I can get on my soapbox because this happens to me a lot, but. That was a big, I don't know, Emily, were you at KC Super Saturday? I don't remember seeing you there. No, I live in Oklahoma. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so that was a huge part of Carl's talk to us, was straight up about all the other competing companies out there, and not just like health and fitness, like all of them. Like he even said the wine MLM, like he was talking about this product you put on at night and you wake up in the morning and you're like 10 years younger like <laughs> yeah so he I mean he just spent a lot of time talking about that specific piece and he straight up said our business is not the easy one mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that <laughs> like there's just so and even our little group we met ahead of time and talked through that I don't trust things that are quick and easy and mm -hmm. these compensation plans that are popping up in these newer businesses that haven't been around as long. I don't buy it. Like to me, that does not seem safe. And in life in general, everything that I know about my walk in faith, like the things that are quick and easy are not trustworthy to me. Mm -hmm. And if this is the kind of business where I have to work harder at it and it's going to be trickier because we're not just selling a product we are we are selling a lifestyle change that requires them to put in the effort as well it's going to be harder to do what we do but to me that makes it way more worth it and that's why our company's been here as long as it has been and why it's going to continue to be the company that it is and better you know mm -hmm. so i just these like flashy, bright, shiny things where I feel like people don't see further than this, they're going to keep popping up and people are going to use that to try to sway us other directions. But for me, my feet are planted where I'm at because I know and trust in this integrity of what we have to offer. Mm -hmm. So when people say those things, which they say often, that's what I just automatically will say, thank you. I bleed beach body blue because this, 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 please don't message me about this anymore. I'm not interested. Like I just, I straight up say that to people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. I don't really get very many of the plexus or like this no. ones that are related to us. I don't, I'm, maybe I'm just very clear that that's not my, <laughs> my thing. I get but, I get rodent and rodent and fields all the time. Yes, rodent and fields. I got the wine one a couple weeks ago. I got this. See how I don't know if you guys can see this. See this whole entire this. Oh, this, word vomit. This is a one message today. Oh, I'm still scrolling. Yep. Oh still my scrolling. gosh. And I said, I just said, good luck with your business, but I'm not interested in a nice way. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. Don't want that stuff. Yeah, I had a lady yeah. message me about like a tooth whitening thing. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. really? <laughs> yeah, I told her I'm already quite successful when I do. Thanks, but good luck in your endeavors. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> she was like, okay, thanks. I think, Chrissy, I think you make a very valid point when you say the quick and the easy things do not last. That, I mean, it is what it is. That's real. Mm -hmm. People just, I just, I tell you what, I just feel like people are pretty lazy. And they don't want to work hard for success. And that's sad. But they're a uh, teach their own. If they want to choose that lifestyle, right, go right ahead. I just don't understand how you can go from being a beach body coach where you're literally changing lives, like inside out, changing lives mm -hmm. to selling wine. <laughs> like, I don't understand how these people jump and ship or even 
lip gloss or whatever. Like I just, I don't you understand. That lip gloss is $50 by the way. Yeah, I know. I know. Like my cousin sells it in Connecticut and she's like, Hey, you want to buy this lip gloss or whatever? Which I was like, yeah, I'll check it out. Like I love lip gloss. But then I was like, why is your lip gloss $45? No thanks. What lip gloss is this? It's lip, lip Mm-hmm. Oh. It, uh, yeah, I yeah. Let's just talk about the mascara stuff that's supposed to make your eyelashes more. Hey, yeah, that stuff works. <laughs> yeah. It's $150 a tube. It is. I haven't oh. bought any more since the one thing that I bought. Oh, but, but it works. Mm -hmm. I can't show you. I made a look at my pretty eyes. I'm wearing mascara on. <laughs> complimented you on your beautiful eyelashes the other day when I picked you up. You did. <laughs> so funny. I'm cheating, but it is really expensive. I haven't. Yeah, it lasts forever, but it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you have something else? I was just going to say that, so I signed a new coach today, and she even told me I was really excited. Okay, so Kinsey has literally been my, she was my first customer when I signed up for Beachbody, and I literally have talked to her about coaching for, I mean, just Ever. consistently, literally, yes, I literally. So anyways, finally, last night, she, she messaged me, and she said, you know, she said, I'm finally ready to sign up to be a discount coach, and I'm like, hurt you know like that's awesome you're gonna get your Shakeology on discount because she buys it every month anyways so she even sent me this long message today and she's like I just really appreciate you always following up with me and making sure that I have what I need she's like and even asked me about coaching she said you know right now she's like I'm planning my wedding so I just want it for the discount she goes but I do want to start doing the business aspect of it soon and I was like perfect that sounds good but it's just one of those things where when you when you don't think that you being consistent means anything to them even at a year later, it does. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one really big thing that I got today because sometimes me personally, I feel like maybe I'm being too much or I'm being annoying or whatever. But to me, that just confirmed with to me that it's totally worth it. So I just wanted you guys to make sure consistency is key. And I got that confirmation today. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's really awesome. I, um, Melissa, I saw you when you posted in Lux Republic today about your Success Club 8. Was that today or yesterday? Yesterday. And you said, I am not afraid of no anymore. Is that what you said? How did you say it? I, I said, uh, oh, now, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know something like that. I remember it too. There's something about how no is not going to stop you anymore, like the fear of the no. Awesome. Right, I can't even remember what I said. Yeah, something like that. Being willing, willing to put it out there and not being afraid of the word no. Mm -hmm. And the training group I'm a part of right now, the book that we're using is Go For No. It's the new updated version. If you guys have never read that, it needs to adamantly like be high on your... PD list because go for no for network professionals right yes yeah. yes and it just came out it's the newest version from March but that book you guys like that when you can get past that sting of a no that like even for me still today I see a no and it's like oh like it really still gets me reading that book is helping me to work through that though like to see that seeing no's is actually really, really good because more than likely down the road, it's going to end up being a yes. When they say no to you initially, they're going to start really watching at that point. And if you can stick with it long enough, people are going to be back around. But um, it, was so, it was so funny because today a lady, I sent a lady, I don't know her really well. And I sent her a message saying, Hey, you know, it, it's starting to be springtime because she works with animals on the farm and stuff like that. And I was like, yay, springtime, you know, going to be outside. And um, was like, it's time to be spring and get ready for summer weather. And she's like, ha, it's not spring here. It's snowing. Not interested. I was like, okay, really? It's snowing there? And she talked back. And I wow. turned snow into not a horrid thing. Uh, whereas before I'd been like, sorry. 
and whoosh, you know, and I ran away. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, it's just such a, this book is so helpful in like shifting from that mindset of hearing a no, like that a time in the past for me would shut me down and I wouldn't be able to message invites for the rest of that day. Cause it would scare me. Like it would like make me feel so stopped in my tracks and pushing beyond that is, what we have to be willing to do. And we have to see no's as a positive thing. We have to change that in our minds too, because at least they're responding. And this book actually challenges you to go for a certain amount of no's in a day. And when you actually strive to do that, you're gonna see it's actually pretty difficult to get a certain number of no's in a day. Because most often people will say, oh, not right now, or, um, maybe down the road, you know, like a lot of times it's not interested at this time, but it's never a like firm no. And so those no's are actually really kind of, it, if you make it out to be, it's kind of a fun game to try to hit like five no's in a day. So you can kind of get that mindset broken free of no is really bad. And now I'm going to stop and quit messaging, you know, <laughs> if you can get past that it's huge. And I see that in Melissa, like she said, she hasn't been hitting success club since probably July, August. And she is breaking free of that. And where's she at right now? Like that's, it's huge when that mindset, that mindset shifts. It's, it's so empowering when you finally let those chains off of being scared and you just go for it, like that's such an empowering feeling. And you know, like Melissa's hitting these great goals and I'm just sure you're so happy about that because you're, you finally broke those chains and you're just going with it. And that's awesome, good for you. Yes, it's been, it's huge, 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 huge. And Christy, she's awesome, I love her, Mwah. She's so great. <laughs> love you. I love you too, girl. <laughs> Well, you guys, we're kind of all over the place with this, but I think there's a lot of good information in this call. Mm -hmm. I feel pumped up to go message some more before bedtime, so yeah. I'm going to do the same. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I hope you guys have a good rest of your evening, and we will do, let me look. I'm going to, like, put it in my phone right now because I'm a oh, mess this month, not on my schedule. We will have a call again on April 25th. So, uh, two weeks from today at nine o'clock, we'll do this again. Awesome. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, ladies. See you guys. Have a good night.